Why does he choose now to cut things? And that's it. Oh my gosh! Hello and welcome back to The Air Effect. I'm Christina and today I want to share with you my kind of quick and dirty way to make a simple gathered skirt. Today's video is a collaboration with a new friend and fellow YouTuber, Stephanie Canada, owner of Backroom Finds. So when you are done here, don't forget to go and check out Stephanie's channel. I will link all of her details down below. But she and I discussed that we both needed to get sewing more and use up some of our fabric. So we decided to make two different versions of simple skirts. She used a pattern and it is a pleated skirt. I did not use a pattern and I used all of the dirty cheap tricks that I know to make it as quick and easy as possible. They are both one day makes, meaning that we made them within the span of 24 hours. Mine took about seven hours. I do want to put in a disclaimer here. I am not a professional seamstress. I have known how to sew for over 20 years. I learned when I was young and my mom really loves to sew, but I have never loved sewing. I don't like patterns. I don't like following rules. I want sewing to be as easy and quick as possible. So everything that I do in this video is meant for those of you who find sewing very intimidating and you want a quick skirt that you can make in a day or less. This is for people who don't want to sew a lot of seams, who don't want to have to hem something, who don't want to have to finish a ton of edges. This is for people who are afraid of making buttonholes, making zippers. So that's the kind of video this is. It is more of a craft with me video. It's not necessarily a tutorial, but I will explain what I did so that if you want to try to follow along, you can. And let's get going. So for this project, I used all thrifted materials. I used two twin vintage duvet covers that I found at Goodwill a long time ago. I used some vintage buttons that I've had in my box forever, and I used snap buttons, which will make it way easier so you don't have to sew on buttonholes or a zipper. And then of course, you're going to need scissors, a measuring tape, and some pins. You will want to measure your natural waist, which is where you bend at the side. And then you will also want to measure from your natural waist to your knee. And it's good to get somebody else to help you so you can get an accurate measurement here. The duvet covers were nice because they already had finished edges and lining, so I was able to lay them out and cut in such a way that I didn't have to finish the hem at all. To get the skirt panel, all I did was fold the fabric in half, measure how long I wanted it to be, and cut a straight line all the way across. I put pins in across where I knew I needed to cut just to mark it. It's a big no-no to fold your fabric in half for cutting, but since this is a quick and dirty tricks skirt, that's what I did. To cut the second one, I put the first one on top and simply followed the line that I had already cut before. One thing I would recommend is ironing these before you cut them, which I did not do and it ended up making the top layer a little bit wonky later on, but that's okay. For the waistband, I took one of the leftover pieces of the duvet cover and I started from the finished edges so that I would have a finished outside edge and I cut it the length of my waist. After I had cut the waistband the length I wanted it to be, I laid it on the table and folded it over to be about as wide as I wanted it to be with a little extra just in case I needed it later. I then decided I wanted to add pockets, so I grabbed another leftover piece and cut the lining off, folded that in half, ironed it, and then grabbed a dress that had pockets that I like. For this, it takes a little bit of finagling, but I traced out that pocket and cut it out twice. Cut them inside out 
so that when you sew them to the skirt and you see inside the pocket from the outside, you're going to see the finished material and not the inside of the material. To insert the pockets, I took each piece and placed it face down so that the correct side of the fabric pieces were together and I folded it out just to make sure I was doing it right <laughs> and then I pinned it in place on the side seam. I did this for both sides. If you are sewing along, only put the pockets in the side that is not going to be opening and closing and we will troubleshoot the other pocket later. To sew these together, you're going to want to first sew each side seam of the pocket onto the side seam of your skirt. And then you want to iron the pocket flat so that it's all one big flat piece. And then you lay them right sides together again, making sure that the pocket is sticking out of your side seam and sew around the edges. Once I had sewn around the edges of the pocket, I did put my hand in to see if the opening was wide enough and then I closed it up a little bit just so that things would not fall out. I ended up starting the side seam probably about a third of the way up the pocket. Then comes gathering the skirt. For this, you want to select a very wide stitch and sew all the way along the unfinished edge of the top of your skirt. Then you're going to pull one of the threads. You will want to pull this thread and slowly gather up your skirt until it's the same length as your waistband. And this was a little bit confusing to figure out at first because I had a finished edge on this waistband already and I wanted that to be on the outside of the skirt so it took me a minute to figure out which side of the waistband needed to lay against the skirt. I also adjusted the gathering as I went just to make sure it was all fairly even. For me, this is the process that takes the most pins and the most care when you are pinning it, just because you don't want your skirt to move around a lot when you sew the waistband on. Once I had the waistband sewn on, I ironed the top edge kind of where I wanted it to be folded just so that it would be easier to fold it and pin it. And then I realized that I had cut it way too wide so I folded the waistband under and I didn't even end up using that finished edge that I had wanted to use. After folding it under and pinning it again, I top stitched it down. You can do this by hand if you want your stitches to be invisible, but again, this is a quick and dirty version of how to make a skirt, so I use the machine. The one thing you will want to make sure to do is to sew as close to the edge of the waistband bottom as you can, and then, once again, iron it. Now comes the part where I had to figure out how to close the skirt. I put it around my waist and marked where the overlap ended with pins so that I would know where to put my snaps. And then I realized... Hello and welcome to This Is What I Look Like when I don't have to be on camera. So the one thing I didn't think about with this skirt is that I'm going to have a side closure, but I also want a pocket in that side. And I put both pocket pieces on already and there's a lot of overlap. So I, th I think what I need to do is obviously take off the pocket pieces as they are um, and create a very short, uh, got like a lining panel where, and you'll see what I mean, I can um, have the pocket in the front 
flap of the skirt, the overlapping part, the, the outside part, I can have the pocket attached fully to that and not to the back part. So that when it's closed, I think this will work. <laughs> when it's closed, um, the pocket works and then the snaps are underneath the pocket. So, I took the pockets off that I had already put in this side and I got another piece of this fabric and laid it out and laid my skirt on top of it so that I knew how long it needed to be. Once again, this already has lining in it and finished edges, so really all I needed was the length and general width. I cut the top and then I folded it up and used the bottom finish edge as a straight guide on cutting it across. So to insert the pocket, what you will do is take your pocket pieces and just like you did with the other side, you will put the pocket pieces finished side down on both your skirt edge and the panel. Just act like this little panel is the other side of your skirt. Pin them down and sew them in place and then sew the sides together just like you did for the other side, only instead of the other side of the skirt, it's the, li it's the little panel. This way, there will be a pocket and a lining on the front of the skirt, and when the skirt closes, the pocket will work and you will have a closure behind it. And of course, don't forget to iron everything. I then trimmed the panel because it was quite a bit too wide. And I folded it over and decided to tack it down by hand. I tacked it down at the top, right along the waistband. And I tacked it down at the bottom, right along the hem. I tried to make these stitches so that they did not show on the outside of the skirt. Then it was time to add the snaps. I figured out once again where I wanted my skirt to close and I ended up sewing four snaps along the top of the waistband. I put two on each side where it closed. I also put two snaps behind the pocket and then for the rest of the edge, I tacked it down very quickly with a very messy and wide stitch because I didn't want to put snaps all the way down the whole skirt. And then I took my two cute vintage buttons and put them on the outside just to make it look a little bit cuter. The last step was to close up the waistband because it had an open edge. I did this by hand, again with a whip stitch, and it was really easy to do. And then I was done. something or maybe it will make you feel a little more comfortable sewing, jumping into sewing. I hope that you learned a few tricks for how to make it a little bit easier on yourself to sew. 
Don't forget to go check out Stephanie Canada's channel. She has her own video up, which I will link down below, for a pleated skirt with a pattern. If pattern learning is more your style, you can go and check out her channel, follow along with her as she makes a pleated skirt. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it taught you a little something. I am sending you lots of love wherever you are. I hope that you are well and safe. And until I see you again, have a beautiful day and thank you for watching. Bye.